420 somewhere right now that somewhere is right here on season two of the cannabis show so hello and welcome i'm producer vince and here's your host ricardo baca vince thank you brother thanks how's it going uh everybody joining us today welcome to the cannabis show where we talk about all things weed that's all things and that's the serious marijuana news and the not always serious reporting as well my fave uh, in fact if you pop onto the site right now the cannabis.co you can read stories about vermont legalization efforts getting nipped in the bud i thought we weren't supposed to do puns about the denver city council's controversial vote on the end of the city's marijuana moratorium finally and about cannabis social media outfit mass roots and their apple application to the NASDAQ market. And my investment in them soon, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a journalist. Watch out, Vince. That's a good point. Uh, but dude, how are you doing today, man? 420 week, we made it. We did, finally. Another whole year since the last 420, and I'm just about recovered and ready for this one, dude. I had a great weekend getting ready for it. We did our second live Periscope from a cannabis facility. We did Concentrate Remedies, Concentrate Manufacturing Facility with our, you know, extract expert, Rye Pritchard. And then the next day, I did a strain review video one with our pot critic Soam, and we did an indica, which is why it's not available on the site yet. <laughs> how are you, Ricardo? <laughs> Jeez, that's how uh, producer Vince's weekends go. Saturday at the extracts facility with Rye, Sunday with a, a video strain review with Soham. Um, I appreciate the hard work you do for the site, dude. It's not a hard life. <laughs> um, but no, things are good on my end. I'm psyched. We have a party coming out. I know a lot of you guys are joining us, and if you're, if, if you're not, if you're free, on Friday night, um, I believe that's April 15th. It is. Check it out, thecannabis.co slash events. And that is, uh, you know, it's gonna be 420 bash, kick things off right proper, uh, have a screening of rolling papers, uh, some staffers doing some Ignite talks. I'm very much looking forward to it. We're gonna give people tours of this set and the Denver Post newsroom, which is exciting. But uh, Vince, I think it's time for the week in weed. Are you ready? I wait all year for 420s, week in weed, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> this is a particularly good week in weed, I must say. But we're going to start this week in weed amid the race for the U.S. presidency. Trump? Um, no, the other guy, okay? <laughs> so Republican candidate Ted Cruz was in Colorado this weekend uh, for the state's GOP convention. And my colleague John Frank asked him, would he enforce federal law and squash legal marijuana markets throughout the country if he was elected president? And since our DPTV crew was there, let's go ahead and just cut to the video. I think on the question of, of marijuana legalization, I think we should leave it to the states. Uh, if it were me personally, if we were voting on it in the state of Texas, I would vote against it. I don't personally support legalization. But one of the great things about our Constitution, about the Bill of Rights and the Tenth Amendment, is it allows federalism, it allows states to experiment. The people of Colorado have made a different decision. I respect that decision. And, and, and it actually is an opportunity for the rest of the country to see what happens here in Colorado, see what happens in Washington state. Let the states implement the policies, and, and if it works well, other states may choose to follow. If it doesn't work well, other states may choose not to follow. From what you know so far, would you agree it's working well? Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to give that some time to let the facts and evidence play out, and, and ultimately that'll be a decision for the people of Colorado. Colorado, I, I think Coloradans understand the problems here far better than anyone in Washington. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, uh, when Taylor West of the National Cannabis Industry Association, she's a friend of the show, when she posted that video on her social media, she wrote, quote, things have moved so quickly in marijuana policy over the last few years that sometimes it's easy to lose perspective, which is why I'm saying out loud that this is pretty remarkable, end and quote. Dude, Taylor's right. It is pretty remarkable. And you, you kind of lose track of it living here in Colorado, and I'm sure our friends in Washington, Oregon, D.C., Alaska, they kind of lose track of it too. Go somewhere where you still got to buy your pot from a chef in the back of some kind of dingy restaurant, and you'll realize how light years ahead of the rest of the world we are in legal states and how fast it's really moving we're complaining about public consumption now from how much am i paying from a quarter a year ago you know dude <laughs> <laughs> i get it you know i was even meeting with a, a friend of mine who writes for mashable and he was in town from california where he lives and even there where he might have a a medical card for a decade plus uh, coming here was still such a sea change for him such a an absolute 
um, you know, such an amazing progression, and his mind was blown, it's fair to say. But uh, Vince, <laughs> elsewhere in the week in weed, we look ahead just a few days to the holiday known as 420. 420. And that's right, just as chocolatiers love February and florists adore May and necktie retailers love June, the marijuana industry truly celebrates April. I feel like the chocolatiers would truly celebrate April too then, but <laughs> the, word, <laughs> it might. the word celebrates might be understating things. The holiday and the party and the activism all come to a head at 4.20 p.m. on 4.20 a.k.a. April 20th. A.k.a. April 20th. It's the biggest holiday for weed-loving America and beyond. And it even has the booming sales statistics at marijuana shops all over the country to prove it. Um, check this. In April of 2015, Colorado shops broke sales records over 420 weekend, selling more than $4.5 million of weed in a single day and making for the state's third busiest sales day in 2015. Only their third. I liked your piece about what Colorado and Washington stores are going to sell this year. It looks like they're gonna be pretty wicked busy, dude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I spoke with cannabis data outfit BDS Analytics the other day about their pot sales projections for 420 week in Colorado and Washington this year, and they are expecting Colorado shops to sell more than $6 million of product in a single day, which is insane. It absolutely is insane, dude. I mean, you guys can shop on the 19th and the 18th too. Like, you don't have to save it all for that day. <laughs> <laughs> in Washington, they anticipate statewide marijuana sales there to triple or quadruple the state's daily average from last April, which, you know, was only $621,000. <laughs> that is an only mark. But, you know, this is, <laughs> it comes down to this being a crucial time for the cannabis industry. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the program. But here is what BDS founder Roy Bingham told me about 420. Quote, it serves as a stimulus for the industry to start thinking about the rest of the year, making sure they have the right inventory levels, but also thinking about the growth they'll see throughout the rest of the year." End quote. All you have to do is drive by a pot shop or a dispensary on 420 to see the lines of people waiting there to make their purchases. It's bigger than Black Friday for the weed industry, and I mean, the shops do celebrate that holiday too, Ricardo. No doubt they do. <laughs> uh, Vince, lastly, in the weekend weed, we take you to Ohio. What up? Uh, where a man there made pot brownies for his unknowing 79-year-old mother Ugh. in the hopes they'd help improve her sleep. Right. Uh, but the man, Curtis Lee Kemper, didn't tell his mom about the weed and the brownies. That's and a no-no. After she gave one to one of her healthcare helpers, that woman became, quote, violently ill and learned at an emergency room that she had, in fact, ingested a bunch of marijuana. A bunch. And Kemper, the man who gave the brownies to his mom, went to jail on two counts of corrupting another with drugs. And you know what? Good. Don't dose someone ever without them knowing what you're giving them, guys. I don't care if it's pot, cigarettes, alcohol, you know, Tic Tacs. Just don't do it. Don't put something into somebody else's system without them knowing. I'm especially concerned about the Tic Tacs. It <laughs> gets real with Tic Tacs. <laughs> hey, it's time to make some quick introductions here on The Cannabis Show. Um, I'm proud to say that we here at The Cannabis are growing. Uh, we, we're hiring, you might have seen that, and, and, and recently we hired a new general manager who is on the set today for a brief hello and, and to help us unveil some fun news you might have heard about if you follow me or the cannabis on social media. Um, in, in fact, it's my pleasure to welcome cannabis GM Lance Lambert to the cannabis show. Get meta here, man. How's it going? <laughs> good, good to see you. Yeah, good to Thanks see you too. Me. Welcome to the couch. You've never been in I've front of the camera with us before. Always been behind the lights, which is fine. That's <laughs> why you're here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fun. You're you're yeah. clearly our new GM. You've been on the beat for for three, uh, four weeks now. But yep. tell me, what does this mean? What falls under your purview as the GM of all things cannabis? That's an excellent question. Um, it really is everything. It's it's looking at it from a business standpoint, uh, working obviously in conjunction with you as our editor in chief, and um, trying to be strategic, but also looking at the vision. Of, of our brand and content. Um, so beyond that, you know, the monetization thereof and uh, the reach. You know, one thing that we even talk about analytics and, you know, while we do have a, a large audience in this country, 
you know, we have a substantial audience outside of the country in Canada, Western Europe, amongst uh, many other places. So um, it really is ex it's expanding the brand, uh, bringing that much more content, and then uh, growing the team. You know, that's one oh, thing man. we're I'm focused thrilled. on. So. Yeah, we're bringing in uh, another part time producer, another full time yep. journalist. Yep. Uh, it's so exciting. And we have a little bit of news today to we unveil. Do. This is uh, Lance and I are excited to share some news, but first I wanted to invite another guest to the couch. Um, making his second appearance on the Cannabis Show, I'm psyched to welcome back to the newsroom Chieftain Supply Company's Brian DeHaven. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. That's a, that's a pretty sweet hat, Brian. Hey, Kat. Is that right? <laughs> Representing. You know that is? All right. First, first things first. <laughs> Brian, sativa or indica? Oh, high levels of CBD in my indica, please. Oh, very specific answer. Yeah, okay. I, I'm kind of old school. I can't, I don't know. <coughs> I know I can't stimulate my brain more than already is, and oof. I won't sleep for days, man. I'll get cross winds of sativas. I'm like, I won't sleep, you know? So. Is there a particular strain of high CBD indica that you're a fan of? Or? Um, the last one I had a really good experience was the ACDC. Okay. That was a little while ago, but I try to... I, I always trust my bud tenders, you know, they always do me right, so <laughs> whatever well, they suggest. Uh, we have Lance on the couch, so you yes. guys, uh, tell us about the news that we're debuting here. Well, uh, something that's definitely an early win with our, our recent growth is a partnership with our friends at Chieftain, and um, we're really excited to kick off an apparel line. Um, power to the people. We got some good feedback and input initially uh, from our um, our readers and our audience. Seriously, and, uh, yeah, they've been really vocal on social media. <laughs> Extremely vocal. Thank goodness for social because it's that it's that 2.0 internet, right? It's that interface of of us getting to speak to them and vice versa. So um, it was really good feedback on on being interested in going this direction. So. Again, it's something we hope uh, you know the end users will love. We're coming out with uh, definitely different lines within the line, uh, but we really felt that Chieftain brought a certain quality, and we enjoy partnering with people uh, when it comes to success. And, and these guys brought the right thing to the table, so we look forward to a long-term relationship. Well, it's fun because uh, we talked about this your first time on the show, but yeah. I mean, you and I go <laughs> way back to yeah, yeah. music festival and skate shop days, yeah, yeah. and yeah. when we rekindled our friendship, and it yeah. was like, oh, you're in weed, and you're writing about <laughs> weed, and okay, let's. Right, yeah. Maybe you, you, you brought this up pretty early on. Let's mm -hmm. work together. Totally. And your guys' designs were, were yeah. definitely kind of, they caught my eye. So and it's I funny was, you say that. I mean, we were like infants a year ago. Yeah, you seriously. Know, we've we've right. grown a lot in a year, so <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Well, tell us um, where can people have a closer look at this merch? What does it include? Obviously, it includes this gorgeous hat yes, that we're looking yes. at. Yes. Yeah, it's the inside that counts, as my <laughs> elementary school teachers used to say. So I think that's um, the open vape is, uh, <laughs> slogan, too. It's, it's, just, that's true. True. <laughs> That's true. Props to them. Um, so yeah, it definitely it is a hat. It's also uh, shirts and uh, lightweight pullovers, lanyards. Um, we really wanted to again, you know, what the end users were interested in is what we're going after, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit of mainstream, but it also gives a bit of a nod to the culture too. I mean, growing up in San Francisco in the Bay Area, I always had it around me and uh, have a huge respect for what traditionally is associated with it, but. You know, definitely having something that, that just really fits the bill, pardon the pun. And uh, yeah, as far as where it can be found, uh, it can be found at uh, thecannabis.co slash store. So that's um, obviously our site, as well as on the Chieftain site, yep. too. And just what's your guys' URL? Uh, Chieftainsupply.com. Keep it simple. Uh, yep. Vince is going to throw up some of, the, some of the pictures that we have of the early merch. Mm -hmm. I love this, uh, this pineapple shirt. I think that yeah. was one of our first creations. You guys it brought it. And, and check out this Colorado-inspired shirt. That was really, really cool. I'm a fan. And this California shirt is the hotness. And I cannot wait <laughs> to be wearing one. I think that's going to happen, happen this fire, fire. dude. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> well, that you guys is all were, over that you know, shirt. It was inspired by you guys. And it was you know designed by us, but inspired by you guys. It's a it's a collaboration. That's how it how it all works. And we listen to you and you know know, know most of you guys' personalities. So sure. we really want to express that in the apparel we put out with you guys. So we're, we're super excited. I appreciate it, yeah, um, Lance. We're gonna chat weed. I'm so glad you joined us though. This was <laughs> yeah, uh, fun actually having you on the couch appreciate for a it. bit, Thanks, man. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Um, Dude, what was what was fun about creating this content with us? I mean, it really was a collaboration. When you mentioned this, like I remember talking to you and saying, I envision a flat brim hat, right. same color as this other hat that you made with the C on the front, like it's a baseball team's right. logo. Yeah. 
What and was most fun about it from your pers perspective as a creator and as, as, as a designer? Well, you guys have just a great look in general for the brand and the cannabis show. And I um, met your art, your artist here in house with the post and right. super nice guy. Mark and created Holly. a lot of this work. Yeah, done a lot. And of I was great like, stuff. we need to use some of this cool stuff, and that's what we kind of did the inside. We can focus. On yeah, that. that's our lady over yeah, here. Yeah, that's right, right up there. So <laughs> we wanted to kind of have the uh, the jewel box effect. Open up the hat and be like, ooh la la. And uh, it's I love it. You know, working in the canvas industry, it's it's like none other. It's super fun, and everybody's always excited and very upbeat and happy about what we're doing. And I was just jazzed because you guys were so quick and talented. I mean, we really did have a lot of ideas, and we're throwing at them, you, throwing them at you, and you'd come <laughs> up with something. You and your designers, yeah. props to your team, um, and 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 constantly coming back with, and saying, oh, "Okay, well that works, and maybe we can tweak that, and that didn't work." But I'm glad we tried it. But yeah. um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm so excited about that California tea, <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to get in trouble from Lance by saying this. I mean, in the last couple months, yeah. um, more Californians are reading the cannabis than. Right. any people from any other state and mm -hmm. we just want to show the love to everybody reading yeah, yeah. this site it's in, it's important all the Texans and Flor mm. Floridians <laughs> Floridans I don't know um, but the, the California tea I remember dropping yeah. you guys a line and saying California flag but cannabis instead of California and you guys took it one step further yeah. by throwing some pot leaves underneath <laughs> the some subtle pot leaves yeah. underneath the bears feet but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I was a super. I, I was a big fan of that. Well, I got to get up to the design team. You know, it's it's not. It's a group effort when it comes sure. to that stuff. So we all kind of put our heads together and come up with the ideas, and it's awesome. It's just we have a great crew, and the team's growing, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. So, Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. And well, we're, cool. We're super stoked. What else is going on at Chieftain these days? Obviously, 420s coming up. You yes. guys are busy. I'm guessing. Super pumped. So the biggest thing for us on 420s, we're launching our spring summer line. Um, so all new designs. We work with artists all across the country, and it's over 35 pieces. And it's it's a pretty large endeavor for us to just for our second release come out with this this much stuff. So we're 35 super excited. 35 pieces. Okay. Yeah, and it's Mostly... some some collaboration stuff and oh, nice. some okay. stuff you know from local artists, some stuff from um, some girls from Minnesota, and we got stuff from all over the place, and just kind of got like-minded, talented people that like what we were doing, and utilized them. And yeah, it's going to be really cool. I have to throw this out there, you know, because uh, going back to November of 2013 when my boss first asked me about being marijuana editor and starting mm -hmm. a site and we didn't know what it was going to be called or what it was going to look like, you know, I remember the first day we thought, hey, maybe the cannabis and, right. you know, you look at all the URLs that are available and the social yeah. presence and, and then one of our uh, designers who's still in the newsroom, Jeff Newman, mm -hmm. came up with the original cannabis logo and, right on. and seeing <laughs> that C on, on a hat and it's, and it's really high quality, uh, I, I'm just so thrilled. So thank you for everything. <laughs> We're um, just excited we could do this for you guys and, and make it look good and keep you guys happy and excited. Oh, about man. It. Well, yeah. it's a partnership. Yeah. I look forward to it. <laughs> right. We're going to chat with you more here in a few okay. minutes, Brian. Thanks cool. for joining us. Cool. Um, on to our next segment, where I will throw to our very own Master of Mota, a Professor Pat, for this week's entry in the new Cannabis Lexicon. Seven ten the new 420 for dabbers. Read it upside down and you'll understand why. It spells out oil. It carries the same temporal obligations as 420 as well, but in true innovative modern dab head fashion, it's much easier to be awake and dabbing at both 7.10 a.m. and 7 p.m. than it is to be wiping sleep out of your eye and rolling a joint at 4.20 a.m like some kind of hippie Luddite Neanderthal. To hear that in a sentence, hey brah, it's 710. I guess that means we should do another dab, right? Thank you for that, Professor Pat. And now on to our next guest, who is making his second appearance on the show as well. He runs the good chemistry brand of marijuana shops in Denver and Aurora and beyond. And let's bring him on out. Matthew Huron, how's it going, dude? 
Hi. All right. There Thanks we go. Thanks for having me. <laughs> what a deja vu. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, how's everything going, man? You you brought a posse out here. Yes. Uh, you're rolling deep in 420 it's week. 420 episode here. We're very excited. Yes. Thanks for having us. Oh, man. Uh, obviously, Vince and I were talking earlier about 420, what this means for the industry. You know, those uh, projections, the sales projections, yeah. really interesting. We're going to see how those pan out. But, yeah. I mean, you're a retailer in this space. So what does 420 mean to you? Is it undeniably the busiest week of the year or, or just up there? It's it's definitely a very busy week. And, uh, you know, again, this year it's on a Wednesday. So the weekend before there's activities, the weekend after. So we're expecting a long week. It's a lot of work. We have to prep and make sure we're fully stocked and all that good stuff. But we're very excited. Very okay. excited about the week. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Indica or Sativa, Matthew? Indica. Indica. Yeah. Two Indicas on the couch. <laughs> that is very rare. Yes. I don't know if we've Twice ever had well. Indicas we've ever gotten. <laughs> I also, you know, I need sedative body calming you know, uh, experiences. I wonder if that's a, a, a common trait with entrepreneurs. You know, we've had, a, uh, obviously, we're constantly having and entrepreneurs on the couch, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, that is the one thing I hear the most about Indica, or, or rather, the lack of sativa, is that, no, that, that would be too much right. for my brain, for my right. headspace. Right, try to turn it off, <laughs> not turn it on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Matthew, I saw you bring out a little black book. Yes. Uh, this is exciting. You and your colleagues have developed um, what you're calling a new consumer evaluation tool called Stats. Correct. Um, I like what I'm seeing so far. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's Stats, and what that stands for here is Sight, Touch, Aroma, Taste, and Sensation. Let's see this. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a five-step process for evaluating cannabis, cannabis flowers. Um, and really, I mean, this came about, the consumer really came to us, you know, so a couple years back, consumers are coming into the stores and, you know, quite frankly, they were just happy to be there. Sure. Legal marijuana, it was like a great thing. And, you know, now they've been asking a lot of questions and they've been really interested in, in understanding poor quality, good quality. And, you know, we just thought to ourselves, you know, what a good opportunity to put something together that would be helpful for the consumer and, uh, and you know, helpful for, we're really looking for this to be broader than just good chemistry. I mean, it kind of started with us and as we were working through this, you know, we realized that this is, this is really a big deal. You know, if you just kind of step back and think about the industry and you think about the evolution of the industry, you know, three and a half years ago, it was illegal, right? Right. You didn't have a TV show, <laughs> right? <laughs> we weren't talking about other states. And, you know, here we are, uh, you know, a little over two years since the first legal store. And we are developing guides for people to think, you know, more about the products and, and, what, and how they can navigate through the world of cannabis. And I think that's just fantastic. If you look at the wine industry, you look at the beer, craft beer industry in particular, I mean, they have guides, they have the consumers have, are interested in, in the grapes and, and, and the different aspects of, of those, those two industries. And I think it's very similar now. And, and that's what we're experiencing. And in this, you know, this post-legalization age, it really is important that all of us play a part in the education of yes. users, consumers, patients. I, I, I like that this is a part of that. I've seen similar products. This is this is very slick, though. I like that it's, as you said, sight, touch, aroma, taste, sensation. Correct. A five-part process. Everybody gets that. Um, but especially since you call it a consumer evaluation tool, part of that evaluation you ideally want to happen at the pot shop before you make a purchase. So how many of these steps can happen before yeah. making a purchase, whether so, it's a good chem or somewhere else? Yeah. So unfortunately, at the shop, we're under you know, regulations. You sure. can't touch. Um, so the only thing you can do at the shop is look, sight, and, um, and uh, smell, aroma. Um, so after that, you, know, you go home with the book. And you could do everything else. <laughs> but do you think you can make an informed enough perspective yeah. from those two Abs steps? Absolutely. Sites a sites a big and it's a big one of the biggest sections in the book. And I think ultimately, uh, sites a, a big deal. Aroma too. I mean, and and when you when you're evaluating those two in particular, you know, there's a lot of what to look for, but there's a lot of what not to look for, and um, or what you know. Um, red flags as we call them in the book and you know I think there's a lot of consumers that you know again are new or 
even if they've been using cannabis for a long time, just really haven't thought too much into it. And you know, you can make a make a uh, uh, it could have high trichome content, which is an indicator, but there could be powdery mildew. Right. And if you've never really seen the two and don't really know, you could you could get confused. So we try to outline that in this book to help people really know poor quality and good quality and things they should be looking for. That was one thing I noticed the first time I was thumbing through this earlier was the, the difference between high trichome content versus high powdery mildew exactly. content and that's a very important, yeah, uh, it's a very important marker important to be able to tell. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you're, you're entrenched in this industry, um, but, but I'm curious, have you walked into a, a competitor shop and, and seen maybe flour on, on, on their racks that maybe surprised you that they were selling? Yeah, I mean, I've- We're I've, not naming names I've or anything, secret, but- I've <laughs> secret shop that, you know, our good chemistries, you know, our foundation is production and product excellence. You know, we, I've been growing marijuana for 16 years. We have a great diverse team of master cultivators. Between the four or five of us, we have 100,000 hour man hours of cultivation experience, and you know we really have a passion and a dedication. And you know we believe we coexist with the plants. Um, and again, there's you know, a real craft, there's a real artistry to it. Uh, and for us, it's important that the product is as top quality as it can possibly be. I dig it. All mm -hmm. right. And who are those other people that you were talking about that you have all those hours? Um, let's shout out to them because. Clearly, they're a big part of this yes, book. Yes, and they're in the book. We, we have a contributors page in the back of, of but uh, Steve Spinoza, who's here in the room with us today, <laughs> and uh, Duncan Cameron, who's our chief production officer, Scott Toland, who's our one of our cultivation managers, and Heath Byington, who's one of our cultivation managers. Oh, nice. Yes. Well, I noticed at the end of this book, um, as, as you can tell from watching the show, you know, uh, glossary terms, education, yes. the new cannabis lexicon. I mean, this is very. Yes core to our mission of educating through through facts and yes. and and science so I'm going to give you a little quiz in the terms of uh, Professor Pat who is a ve who is very much a stickler on vocabulary exams okay so you're going to tell us what a pistol is and it's defined at the end of this book yes um, but also tell us why they're important in cannabis so the pistols are the hairs on cannabis and um, we describe that in the book but pistols can range in color and they they are, what they do really for the plant is the reproductive, they collect the pollen. So for us, we're not trying to collect pollen unless we're breeding and doing some experiments that way, but for most cultiv cultivating cultivators, it's all female plants, they don't want to have seeds. So the pistols are really there for that. Um, but they also show when the plants mature. So you'll see a change in the color when the plants mature and different strains mature at different times and depending on, on the change in the pistol color is also an indicator of the plant is mature, ready to harvest. So when I read that earlier, I thought immediately to our pot critics who are who are obsessed over the little hairs on uh, you'll find on marijuana. <laughs> yes. So the little orange hairs, the mm -hmm. red hairs, are those pistols? Those in are fact? the pistols, correct. And they they can range uh, again from anywhere from light yellow to to orange to sometimes red and different strains. And it can be an indicator of that particular strain as well. Ah, right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, shout out statsguide.org. People can yes, learn yes. more about this. Absolutely, statsguide.org. It's uh, we have actually a longer version of the book on on the um, website. You can PDF it, download it. Um, so please go on and get educated. Educate yourself. I want to bring Brian back into the conversation. Um, obviously, the show is the 420 show. We'll have. You know, the post 420 wrap up <laughs> next week, I suppose. But, um, you know, I asked this question to some of our contributors last year and they came up with some pretty compelling answers. So I want to know what, from, from you guys, what 420 means to you. Uh, Brian, why don't you get us started? Whew, it's been a. It's been a stressful week leading up to it, I guess. It's, been just, <laughs> well, it's exciting. It's so exciting. There's so much going on. There's so much to do. And we really have to use all hands on deck as far as our company goes to get everybody at these events and doing things to, to promote and be a part of the, you know, the, well, the holiday, it's, it's the holidays, you know, so we're, we're leading up to the holidays and we're launching our spring and summer line 
in the holidays. So we're going to try to keep doing that throughout, you know, and also 420 will always be to us the launch of our spring summer line. So, so that's what's super exciting, you know. So it's, it means do you work and probably no, it's, a it's lot good, of work. It's, it, it is good work, but it's, it's stressful, but yeah. it's, you know, it's what we live for and it's what we do, you know. So <laughs> no, no other industry I'd rather be in around this time of year. So it's fun. Matthew? Well, little the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a lot of work, and it is every year, and it gets more and more every year, which is a good thing. We're excited. But, you know, I think ultimately it's it's just fantastic to have a holiday. Again, it, uh, back to legitimizing the industry and, and really having it be, become more mainstream. I mean, it's wonderful to see all the tourists come here for 420, and the hotels are booked, and it's really just a neat, cool time to be in the cannabis industry, and in particular in Denver. Uh, one thing I love about it, you know, and this just kind of came about in the last three years, at least from my perspective, but with legalization and commercialization and now normalization, um, it seems like this went from being that unofficial stoner holiday to full-on, legit, <laughs> when is Hallmark going yes. to start making right. cards holiday, exactly. you know? Because <laughs> last year, I remember I got a tip from a reader, yeah. a really fantastic tip from a reader who uh, snapped a picture uh, with their cell phone in a King Supers in Boulder. And uh, you know how they do like end caps displays for St. Patrick's Day or the Super Bowl, and there it was. Stock up your chips. 420 <laughs> display yeah. in, a, in a King Supers, which is owned by you know grocery right. giant Kroger. And I was right. like, this, and, and I just immediately logged on to the cannabis, and I was like, I need to write. <laughs> and it was very brief, but I'm like, this is unofficial no more. This yeah. is legit. This, this is, is a, a yeah. holiday. It's a holiday. Yeah. Put it on the calendar. I want it to show up on my iPhone. Yeah. That just happened. Yes. And it's it's kind of fascinating. It, it is. The legitimization. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of I don't know if you saw Modern Family too. The guys dosed to go see a movie, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "They're doing that on you know that's a popular yeah. show." Yeah, uh, that big yeah, network true. television, <laughs> uh, gentlemen. It is time for the pot quiz. Oh. You both have done this before, but a brief reminder, okay? You get the question. If you get the answer wrong, you get to steal it for the point. And and you guys are both uh, veterans at this, so I'm curious who's gonna pull I this lost out. Last time, so. <laughs> you, you lost last time. Do you remember how you did? I think I did all right. <laughs> all right. Well, Brian, we're starting with you. All right. Name the celebrity oh, who is waiting to hear back from the state of Hawaii on his application to open a medical marijuana dispensary there. Uh, the celebrity you're speaking of, I believe, is Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson! Yeah, yes. boom, yes. nice, okay. <laughs> Matthew, we have a similar question for you. Okay. The creator of what very popular video game is also, ve is also waiting to hear back from Hawaii about his proposed pot shop. So name the video game, it's decades old, still popular now, was equally, if not more popular, in the 80s. Okay, oh, well, I'm gonna say Pac-Man. <laughs> Pac-Man, that's a good guess. All right. That's a good guess, but it's not quite on. Um, oh, great. Brian, for can the I, Can I ask for a hint? Yeah. God, no. <laughs> you each have way too me. many people in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I know, why is this possible? Right? 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 way too excited yeah. back here right now, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just gonna guess uh, Tetris, I don't know. That's a gr good guess because that is, that is it. it. Oh. Uh, Hank Rogers is his name. Wow. And he spells it H E N K. It's a great stoner game. I love it. <laughs> it is a great <laughs> You know, I don't think I've ever played Tetris Stone. Yeah, it's. I should it. change that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Uh, Hank, H E N K, and Woody are both waiting to hear back from Hawaii. Wow. And who knows? This show will be published on uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And Maybe we'll know already, but we'll have the fresh news on the cannabis. Um, Brian, this question comes to you. A bill is currently moving through the Colorado State Legislature that would allow parents to provide medical marijuana treatments to their children mm -hmm. where? Oh, uh, uh, Jer Jersey? No. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Sorry. It's in the Colorado State Legislature. It's, it's Colorado. Okay, sorry. Um, so it would allow parents to provide medical marijuana treatments to their children where? What location? And making them go to Jersey would just be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> so where that came from? We're going to go make you hang oh out my with God. Chris Christie as you do this. I was thinking something totally different. And a so, peanut gallery. Let's keep it down. I hear yeah, the whispers. Keep it down. Heckled. Keep it down. Getting heckled. Um, so it would be a city in Colorado? It'd be... Hmm, 
It and would be a, lo a general what location that applies to other general locations statewide. <laughs> uh, Highland Ranch. Uh, <laughs> this might be my They're fault totally for, for miswriting the, the question, but okay. let's see how okay. if Matthew gets it, okay. then we'll see. Schools. Schools. Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> I didn't understand the question. Obviously. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my maybe gosh. I miss. Maybe it was a little bit clumsy. But. Oh yeah. Sorry. Still, Matthew gets the point. Yeah. There. So yeah, that was my bad. He's here to stay. Okay. <laughs> and Matthew, last question of the show goes to you. Days after Whoopi Goldberg announced her new marijuana products aimed at women who uh, want to combat menstrual pains. What state's legislature introduced a, a bill that would add menstrual cramps to their list of MMJ qualified ailments? Hey, peanut gallery, keep like it down out the there. Right. Where's the signs? Um, what <laughs> state? Where does Whoopi live? <laughs> okay, that's too much. <laughs> um, I'm going to say. I'm going to say Illinois. Hey, that's a good guess. That's Lots wrong. of interesting stuff happening in Illinois, but it is not Illinois. Brian. <laughs> it's coming back around. I'm not going to say school. Take <laughs> care. It's not the Highlands either. <laughs> not Highlands Ranch. Not Minnesota. Hey, what's funny about the answer to this question <laughs> is that it was one of the answers you tossed out previous question. New Jersey. <laughs> I swear where, I didn't look at your card either. That's crazy. Which is where Whoopi lips. Okay. I was going to say New I York. I thought it was California, yeah. Yeah. Well, That's I mean, you I know, yeah. the view tapes in um, Midtown Manhattan. And, oh, okay. um, and yeah, she, she commutes. So <laughs> you guys are fun. Yes. Both a valiant effort. Happy 420. Yes, happy 420. Thank, Thank you, Matthew you. Huron. Thank you, Brian DeHaven. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, Thanks to everybody watching us today, uh, including uh, Cannabis General Manager Lance Lambert making his cannabis show uh, debut. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please tell, keep telling your friends about us. Uh, keep finding the podcast over uh, Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, props to producers Vince, Katie, and uh, Eric. Who else is in here? Props to the crowd, and we will see you guys next week. Happy 420 to everyone. <laughs> Nice work, man. Yeah. I'm allowed to lose the truth to win. I'm all in. I'm calling any pots that you'll be raising at the end. I'll say it again. Ain't afraid to get in. I'll be going for the jackpot with Ace in my hand. I'm raw.